Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, the names of infamous serial killers. But what about Ada Brilby? Believe it or not, in the late 1940s, her image was one plastered across Texas newspapers from the Red River to the Gulf. She never faced a jury, but some people say there's no question she was our area's first female serial killer. Todd Unger has this WFAA original. If you want to know anything about Fort Worth's past, there's no better place than the Fort Worth Memories Museum. I've had the same phone number 44 years. No better resource than its owner. I've got over 56,000 photos. This is a photograph. This is very important. And Larry O'Neill. How the deaths actually happened. Has a story. Like I say, she was the first serial killer in Tarrant County, female, and walked. Chestnut Avenue on the north side is an unassuming street. 70 years ago, it's the most talked about address in Texas. And there was people that called it the death house back then. At the beginning of 1948, a family of four lives here. George and Ada Bilbrey, their daughter Dorothea Duke, and her husband, Richard. In severe pain, he's, he doesn't look good, you need to hurry over here. Then, over an eight month span, three die pills of poison doing the deed. Was there was enough strychnine to kill 10 men. The lone survivor, little 51 year old Ada, a little too coincidental for authorities. She's under arrest, but she has to stay here and they leave a armed police officer 24 seven around the house. Wasn't long before Ada and her spectacles became a media sensation. She made the front page of the Star Telegram and the press 75 times in a 10 month period. Larry says the woman used reporters in her affiliation with a local church. Courtroom appearance of the parishioners of the To Catholic gain public church. sympathy while proclaiming her innocence. Ada immediately called the Fort Worth Press and said, I want to do a uh, press conference. You know, as soon as people are aware that there's a, a type of case like this, they become very hungry. Dr. Kerry Atkinson studies killers and their psyches at Texas Wesleyan University. But it's a deceptive way of killing people. It's the poison, he says, is a classic weapon of choice for females, as is creating doubt. Their kindly next door grandmotherly figure uh, for committing these types of crimes, they're not typically boogie men in the dark. With, with scary knives waiting to hurt you, they're very unassuming. Press reports at the time spell out how as the months tick by, the prosecution's case downtown starts to crumble. What can they actually convince a local jury to believe beyond a reasonable doubt? Forensics are almost non-existent, no witnesses. And in the summer of 49, the charges quietly disappear, but Ada, does not. She married again within two years, and her husband supposedly died of a unusual accident. Larry actually tried to visit the woman years later in a rest home. I could home. ask how many people had come seen her, and they said, none, you're the first. And she didn't want any part of me. Didn't want to see any family. Uh, on my mother's side, uh, they didn't talk about it. They just did not talk about it. Larry is Ada's nephew. The deep mystery surrounding her life, something that has taken years to accept. Uh, people ask me why. I think she was just a bitter old woman. I, I don't know. Out of the four people that lived there, there was only one left standing. He has no doubt about her guilt and is finally ready to talk all about it. That's the Ada Bilbrey story. Ada Scarborough Bilbrey. Yeah, if you stop by, Ada, why would Ada still be around? The museum. So she didn't really Todd Unger, Channel 8 News. Coming up.